on another wild camp to one of my favourite spots in the Peak District, Kinder Scout. Now there's, there's many ways up onto to Kinder. They're all steep. It doesn't matter which way you go up, you've got to climb. Today I'm going up Grinsbrook Clough. It's uh, quite a bit of a slog up and then it gets really steep for the last 200 metres, more like a, a boulder field. But it's a different way up, so I thought I'd try that. What I'll do, I'll try and show you on a map the route we're taking, where I'm going to camp, and also the main reason for doing this video. Now, the main reason for this camp is to give you an aerial view of the Kinder Scout Plateau and wild camp up there at the same time. This is a map of the area and I've outlined the Kinder Scout Plateau in yellow. It's one of the highest places in the Peak District at uh, Probably an average of 600 metres, that's nearly 2,000 feet. It's roughly six miles in length and probably one to two miles across. We set off from Edale where I parked my car, walked up through Edale village and then headed up Grinsbrook Clough. We're about here now, so we're going to make our way all the way up Grinsbrook Clough till we get onto the edge of the plateau. I'm going to follow the edge path then to the top of Crowden Clough. That's a good spot to get some water from. Now I want it to be in a basically the the middle of the plateau so I'm going to make my way up to a place or an area known as Crowden Head. Hopefully, if I get my drone up there, I should be able to film all the plateau. Depends a little bit on the weather, but we'll, we'll see how we go. But I should be able to point out all the features as the drone flies round in a big circle. And it's also a good place to camp as well. So, best get going, and I'll see you at the top of the... Uh, Grins Rock Clough. Nearly at the top of Grins Rock Clough now. It is hard going. It's so steep this last couple hundred metres and there's massive uh, boulders to scramble over. But once we've got up here, all the climbing is out of the way. And if you think it's, it's bad going up, it's even worse coming down. We're at the top of Grinsbrook now. That uh, last bit was really steep. Uh, it's more of a, a scramble than anything. Uh, some real big boulders to climb over. From here, we're heading along the edge path for about half a mile, and that'll get us to the top of Crowd and Clough. That's where we're gonna collect some water and then from there, we'll take a northern, northerly bearing and head straight off into the centre of Kinder Scout up to Crowden Head. So I'll see you further down along the path. We're on the, the edge path now, heading over to the top of Crowden Clough. That's where I plan to collect some water. Can get quite busy on the edge path. 
it basically goes all the way round so a lot of people don't venture off the edge path I think I did a, I did a video back in I think it was September 2016 it was called Kinder Scout Edge Walk and I, I walked all the way around filming it as I went uh, it was a beautiful beautiful uh, clear day I think I had two days up here I'll leave a link to it in the in the description if you want to have a look at it but uh, I think it was about a 23 mile walk to, to go all the way around but a fantastic walk so like I say the edge path can get a bit busy because people tend to, to stay on it once we've collected this water down at uh, Crowden Clough I'm going to head off into the centre then uh, to Crowden Head that's where we're going to camp and uh, I don't think there'll be anybody there uh, I'd like to think we'll have the, the place to ourselves So we've just arrived at Crowden Head and I'm pleased to say there's nobody about. I've got the place to myself. So looking forward to pitching my tent here. It has started to cloud over a bit. So I'm gonna get me drone footage done first before I get my tent pitched. Basically, I'm gonna get the drone high up into the sky and hopefully film all the Kinder Scout Plateau. So we'll get this thing airborne. I'm sort of keeping the drone nearer to the camera so I don't get the sound of it on my microphone so much. So we'll get this thing high into the sky. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could welcome you aboard Dickinson Airways and thank you for flying with us today. We'll be cruising at an altitude of around 400 feet. The weather is a little bit hazy, but hopefully you should get a good view of the Kinder Scout Plateau. We're going to follow the edge path all the way round Kinder Scout in an anti-clockwise direction, starting from the top of Crowden Clough where we collected the water earlier. Seatbelts on please and let's get going. So that is the top of Crowden Clough. The large rock on the right is Crowden Tower and this is the edge path that we walked along earlier. As you can see, 
it is a little bit hazy. Just coming in to view is Grinslow Knoll. At 601 metres, it's a uh, quite a high spot. It's usually very windy on top. Just at the side is Grinsbrook Clough. That's where we walked up earlier. Now, if you look beyond, you can just make out Loose Hill and the Great Ridge. At around 470 metres, it's quite a bit lower than we are up here. The dark crag just coming into view is Ringing Roger. That's my usual route up Kinder Scout. It's very direct and very steep. We are now looking east towards Sheffield. And you can just see Cruxton Knoll, the eastern edge of Kinder Scout. Now, an interesting feature ahead is that that is the narrowest part of Kinder Scout and it is known as, I believe it's a seven or it could be the six minute crossing. You can cross from the south side to the northern side of Kinder Scout in six to seven minutes. Very useful to know. In the mist, you can just make out Blagdon Clough, a beautiful little clough, but very steep. Looks like we're going through a bit of turbulence. You're gonna to have to put your seat belts back on. Next, we have seal stones, where all the stones sort of resemble seals and I suppose that's obviously how it's got its name. Coming to the best bits now, this is the northern edge of Kinder. That's seal edge, fantastic views. The rocky outcrop there is Chinese wall. It's a climber's crag and they've probably named it but it's also an amazing place to camp. I had a fantastic camp there earlier this year in February. You've probably seen it. Then we've got Fairbrook Clough and Fairbrook Nays coming into view. Again, beautiful places to camp and you'll most likely have the place to yourself. The next section of the path is simply called The Edge. But what a fantastic view you get at Ashup Valley. In the distance is Sandy Hayes at uh, around 624 metres. It's the most westerly point of Kinder Scout. We then get to Kinder Downfall, a very popular spot where the water flows uphill on a windy day. Now if it was not so hazy, you would be able to see Manchester in the distance. Kinder Low coming into view now. At 631 metres, it's one, is one of the highest points on Kinder Scout. Then we pass some famous rock formations of No Stool, Pimp Chair, and the Wool Packs. Some fantastic rock formations there. And finally, Crowd and Tower, where we started. So, that completes our short flight around Kinder Scout. Hope you have enjoyed the flight and thank you for flying with Dickinson Airways. If you could uh, 
keep your seat belts on as we will be landing soon. That's my drone back, I'm pleased to say. Time to get uh, the tent pitched, I think, now and get back to some proper camping. Now, the area where I filmed with the drone it was mostly heather and tussocky grass and quite a lot of bog so i've moved south a couple hundred meters and i found this rocky area massive slabs of rock but there are quite a few level pitchers uh, amongst the rocks so i'm gonna look around here and uh, find a, a site to pitch So, I found a nice spot to pitch, it's in a bit of a hollow, behind a couple of rocks for a bit of protection. And as you can see, it's a different tent. I've treated myself to, it's a Terra Nova Laser Competition 1. I wanted something a bit, little bit lighter, it weighs less than my a uh, bivy bag it lays less than a kilogram and it's got a decent sized porch to cook in that's all i can tell you about it i've tried it put it up in the garden and this is the only second time i've pitched it so we'll have to see how we go on it was a bit fiddly but it's a new tent uh, I only want it for summer camping, just to reduce my pack weight uh, a little bit. I might get another camping, uh, say September, and then I think it'll be back to the Sulu. Anyway, a quick look round. Not that there's much to see up here. It's totally featureless. There's nothing for about a mile all the way round me. Completely level flat plateau of kinder scout and there's no people as well which is a good thing so i got a few jobs to do got me water to filter i'm then going to cook my main meal and have a drink um i'm not going to film that it's the same old stuff i always have dehydrated spaghetti bolognese when I'm lightweight camping so it will be nice to have my main meal which without having to mess with a camera so I'm gonna get on get myself sorted and I'll I'll come back to you in a little bit hopefully there'll be enough room in the tent to film and I've got a couple of nice malt whiskies to try just uh, after I've had my meal. So I'll see you in a, a little bit. Bye for now. Just had to nip out and watch the sun, sun go down. Gonna be dark uh, probably 20 minutes or so now. All settled in the tent now. Like I say, it's my first time really using it, so I'll just have to see how I go with it. It was a bit fiddly setting it up. The the Sulu, it just goes straight up, it's so easy. This you saw I nearly had to put things together. Um I wouldn't have wanted to be doing that if it was windy and wet something like that but it is for summer the things i mentioned attracted me was the lightweight 1000 gr uh, grams uh, or it's actually probably about 900 so that's good 
and the porch. You might not be able to see it, but I've got a ma for such a small tent, there is a massive porch. I've managed to cook all my meal inside the tent. Uh, I had the door open, but in bad weather, I'm sure you could close the door. The ground sheet, uh, not the ground sheet, the fly sheet doesn't really come down to the ground, so there's loads of um, ventilation. But yeah, that's the thing that attracted me, was the size of the porch for cooking in. So yeah, not bad. We'll have to see how I go on with it. Now I'm afraid this is a lightweight camp, as light as I can get it. So there's no beer, can't bring heavy bottles of beer up, and there is no wine. Again, it's the weight. So, like, it's a lightweight camp. So we've got a couple of nice malt whiskies, 12 year old malt whiskies. I was looking on eBay and I put in lightweight whiskey flask. Thought I'd see if anything came up. And this came up. It's all it is is uh, it was six quid. He's got two little flasks in it, and it sort of attracted me straight away. So I paid me money. I've got two little flasks. Each holds sixty milliliters. Twenty-five mils is like a single whiskey. So I've got about five whiskies there. So not bad at all. So the first one we're going to try, which I've already poured myself. This is the bottle. You've got to use your imagination. It's Old Pulteney, if I've pronounced that right. I have trouble pronouncing English words, never mind Scottish. Old Pulteney, 12 year single malt. It's actually distilled at Wick, which is on the northeastern um, coastline of uh, Scotland right next to the coast uh, I think it's it's matured in high quality American ex bourbon casks so it is a nice nice amber color well very clear color I wouldn't say an amber I'm used to drinking beer so it's Sort of very blondy coloured, yeah. But as soon as you can smell it, you can... You get the, like, a, a, a fruity, a fruity smell, um, even citrusy. Now, you are supposed to... Well, you could say it's known as the Maritime Whiskey because it's, it's uh, matured on the coast for 12 years and it's got the like the coastal Atlantic uh, air sort of all coming ashore. So the, it has supposed to have uh, got like a, a faintly taste of the sea. Oh, it's very smooth. I wouldn't taste, I wouldn't say I can taste the sea. But there is like a, even a citrusy, a citrusy taste to it. Put it in half nice. I like whiskey, usually after I've had something to eat. Because you're, you're full. So... Uh, I don't want to drink beer when I've got a, a full belly full of food. So I, I think whiskey is a, it's a nice drink uh, after you've had a meal and that. Or in the evening. Or any time of the day really. And it, it, it goes well up on the moors. Beautiful. It's not harsh like, uh, you know, your, your blended whiskies. You can sometimes cringe when you t take a swig of those. But this is, is so smooth, it's beautiful. 
and you've got a lingering link you, you the taste stays with you like a lingering taste anyway i've got enough uh, whiskey in my little flask to have another one of those so i think i'll uh, sit and enjoy that and then i'll uh, i'll come back to you in a bit and we'll we'll have a look at the other whiskey see you in a little bit back again well after the last whiskey um I listened to the radio a bit and I tried another it was a, a sweet that I, I wanted to try it was so easy it was basically some dehydrated apple I mixed um, custard powder with it a little bit of sugar uh, vacuum packed it it was so small and all I've done is add water brought it to sort of like uh, the boil and it made a very simple sweet you could you could taste uh, obviously the sweetness of it. it it was nice and that so it, it's one I might try again a uh, very lightweight uh, but it was it was very nice anyway we're ready to to try our second whiskey uh, this one this is a bottle remember Abalo if I've pronounced it right for Scottish viewers Abalo um, again another 12 year old single malt and this is beautiful obviously I have tried these at home before I brought them but uh, alright it doesn't do the bottle any description that um, the bottle's beautiful it's a real heavy stubby little bottle with a massive uh, neck on it um, the bottle was so impressive I mean probably weighed a, a kilo or something like that so uh, I got both these I tend to look at the what the supermarkets have got they've always got something with £10 off I think both these whiskies retail price would probably be something like 34 36 pound a bottle I got them I think I got them from Sainsbury's this I went round I couldn't find anything at Tesco so I tried Sainsbury's I got them for about it was about 50 quid so I probably got 10 pound off each bottle I think they were both about 25 ish something like that for a 12 year old single malt that's not bad at all so this is yeah Abalo 12 year old straight away I ought to mention this is like uh, it's a space side whiskey Scotland and it's um, it's double matured the maturity in uh, I think it's American oak casks and Spanish sherry casks so it's then brought together at the end of the maturation and uh, straight away you can smell the sherry oh it smells beautiful very sweet very sweet smell hmm oh that is beautiful it's a sherry the sherry flavor hits you straight away and it just lingers there's there's other there's like chocolate like a chocolate or a toffee oh you can you can just taste those flavors uh, on your tongue that is beautiful the other was nice this is beautiful this is fantastic one of the best I've had for a while Abalo
I'll put that down for I drink it all. But that has got a beautiful taste, that. I'll sleep well tonight. Actually, I am tired. You, you, well, you might not realise, but just filming this little bit. Got a tripod the end of the tent. I've got my headlamp wrapped round it, trying to point at the right direction, so I can't see anything up here. I've got a spotlight shining straight in my face, so for the next half hour I'm going to see big blotches in front of my eyes and that. But it's all worth it. But when you walk up, you, you climb up from uh, Edale. So the, the physical side is quite... It drains your energy and that, but in an enjoyable sort of way. But when you put the filming on top, it occupies most of the day. You try and film one little sequence walking down a path, and next minute, 12 other walkers come past. So you wait and wait, they've all gone. You set your camera up, you're ready to shoot. Somebody comes the other way. It's very frustrating. So one little shot might take you half an hour or something like that. So at the end of the day, it's, it's, uh, it's frustrating, it's tiring because it, it's taking you all day to get the shot you wanted. And quite often, a lot of the sequences, I'll, I might have a couple of goes at it and then pick the best one when, when I get to the editing stage. But it is worth it for the when you can put the video together and you think yeah that's ju just how I wanted it that's what I wanted to, to get across that is so smooth And that sherry flavour, oh, it's beautiful. Luckily, I've half of my little bottle left. I think we might have to get a bigger flask or something like that, because, uh, yeah, they ain't going to last long. It's a good job I didn't bring the whole bottle, because it would be difficult to stop drinking that. It goes down so easy. So that is a beautiful golden amber colour. It won't be the same if you drank it out of a plastic cup or straight from the flask. It's always nice out of a glass. Let's find a bit of level ground. Well, I hope you enjoyed your flight today by Dickinson Airways, a little uh, flight round Kinder Scout. I wish it had been clearer, but it's hit and miss, you can't have everything. At least it, it showed you all the features, a lot of them are so well, kno well known when you think of Woolpacks, uh, Ringing Roger. Uh, Fairbrook Nays, Chinese Wall, which I know well, um, Kinder Downfall, and on all the stones, those net well, to people that go walking, those names are, are so well known. Just don't want to knock it over, that would be a tragedy. such a warm a warm feeling and that that taste sort of lingers with you so I think I'm gonna say good night at this uh, have a little bit left I'll I'll sit and enjoy this and I reckon I should sleep all all right tonight uh, I do feel tired it was like I say it were quite a long day getting all this done so I'll bid you good night and I'll I'll see you in the morning. Night then.
beautiful. Morning there. Not a bad night sleeping and not a bad morning as well. A bit misty, but uh, it's nice and still. Temp performed uh, very well. I was impressed with the amount of room I'd got in there. I think I, I had the inner door down most of the time and it, it seemed to give me a lot more room. I did sleep with the inner door up initially and I, I didn't feel sort of claustrophobic or anything. I, I liked the closed in feeling, like a coziness. Uh, but what I, so after that, I, I just dropped it down because I was plenty warm enough. But what I was impressed with, the size of the porch. I'm sure that porch is bigger than the porch in my Sulu. So you have got loads of room to cook in. Um, all my evening meal I cooked in there. So yeah, I, it, I was impressed with it. Um, a bit fiddly setting it up and obviously a lot of comments where I've read reviews have mentioned this, uh, this cover that goes over Central Seam. Uh, it's a pity about that. Uh, but it's been going, I don't know if it's going about 20 years, 15, 20 years, so it's a proven track record. Obviously the price has dropped quite a bit. Um, so yeah, I think it'll it'll suit me for summer camping. Hopefully get another camping soon. I was surprised how much water I used. I filled my cooking pot up with about a litre of water, filtered it, and then I filled two of these bottles. So I've got three litres of water. Well, I've only got about that left when I've had my breakfast, so perhaps enough for another drink. I've drunk nearly all that. I've only done a little bit of where uh, cleaning the pots and that. So it shows you how much water you need, and you do need a water filter, really. I've been using that Soya Mini, and it is very slow. I was probably about 10 or 15 minutes filtering the water. That's why I don't do it down with the river, the, uh, the, the brook, I bring it up here and I can do it when, uh, when I want. But yeah, it did take a while, so I will be on the lookout for uh, a different type, probably something that'll filter water a little bit quicker. I mean, it is fine and it's lightweight, but it's just the time it took. I'll get my stove back on. Oh, it's on. Just have it a bit quieter. So yeah, simple breakfast, I've got a cup of coffee, gets you going, and then it's just porridge, that's porridge oats, powdered milk and a bit of sugar, and I always put a bit of uh, golden syrup in it, makes it really sweet and really enjoyable. So I'm going to have my breakfast and then if everything's dried out okay, get everything packed up um, and then it'll be back down to Edale, make my way home. So I'll, uh, I'll see you in a little bit when we're all packed up. Right, that's all my gear packed away, ready to head back down to Edale. Nice little spot this, miles, you sort of feel miles from anywhere, nice level pictures, bit of shelter, so I reckon a winter camp up here will be very nice. 
but uh, an enjoyable camp and hopefully the drone footages work and you can join me on Dickinson Airlines on a, a flight round uh, the Kinder Scout Plateau. Another thing, no midges. We're the end of August and I'm not being troubled by the midges. Whether it's the height, there has been a breeze quite a lot of the time, probably just kept them at bay. But, uh, and I've been in the tent, I've not been bivying. So it was good to, not to have the midges and that. So I should get another camping in September. We're at the end of August now. So I'll get a camping in September. I might not put it on till beginning of October. Um, I've got a, a bit of time away, so I think I'll, I'll leave it till, uh, till October before I put it on. I need time to answer the comments and, and all that side of it. So, hope you enjoyed it and uh, thanks for watching and I'll, I'll see you on the next camp. Bye then.